Hey, I'm Owen and today I'm very excited to be at one of the world's largest scale model exhibitions in Telford. Throughout my day at Telford, I got to chat to many talented modelers who gave me lots of great tips and advice on building and painting cars, tanks, planes, ships and dioramas, and that's all coming up later in the video. Telford Scale Model World takes place in three giant halls filled with stands and a competition area upstairs. There are thousands of incredible models to look at and be inspired by. As well as groups displaying their models, there are lots of stalls where you can buy a vast range of model kits, paints, books, decals, stands, you can find anything and everything at Telford. While having a look around, I was called over by John. He's a multi-skilled modeler and has built kits ranging from cars to figures, tanks and plates. I asked him if he approaches car models any differently from planes and tanks. I tend to build the car kits the way I always built them, was, so I use zero paints and lacquers and I'll clear coat and stuff like that that you don't do with aircraft. Do you ever apply like um, any actual car polish to the kits? For anyone who's long term in modelling they'll probably know the name Ted Taylor. Ted Taylor used to review and build for uh, Matchbox and Airfix magazine and stuff like that way back. And um, he always used to bring up a little tub of this magic polish, which we soon learned was Mirror, M-E-R, and uh, I still use it. It's just ordinary car polish. I'm old fashioned, just a bit of car polish and buff it up. If you had any advice for some people who are just joining the hobby, ah. what, would you, what would you say to them? A universal rule of thumb is enjoy what you're building, build what you like, and always try a new technique. Even if it's only once a year, try, and, try a bit of uh, weathering or try a bit of fact form or try a bit, you know. Always try and learn a new skill and just ask people. In other clubs, at shows, never be afraid to ask anyone because all you want to do is talk about your own models anyway. So if you ask somebody, they're more than happy to tell you, you know. So enjoy it. That's all I can say. I think that's some great advice from John. If you'd like to watch his full interview and find out more about his models and techniques, click the link in the video description or in the cards. Already the time was flying by. I'd been given permission to film the judging taking place so I made my way up to the competition area. The renowned competition has multiple categories for all different varieties of models, from figures to sci-fi, and even has junior categories for younger modelers. The quality of the models entered into the competition this year were truly phenomenal, and I came to appreciate how hard the judges' jobs must be. I had the opportunity to ask Jim, an IPMS judge and exceptionally talented modeler himself, what the judges look for in a potentially award-winning model. General rule is accuracy, alignment, paint finish. In the case of aircraft, decals without silvered edges, um, decals that are aligned, decals that are the correct size, which is not always a prerequisite. Trying to apply the same criteria to the very small models as the large models is very difficult. On larger models, you can, of course, add far more detail. In aircraft, armour and vehicles, it's always the same. What do you personally enjoy about judging at Telford? I enjoy spending time in an uncrowded environment to be able to take a very close look at my fellow modellers' work. Is it enjoyable? It can be. At times, it is heartbreaking when you have two models of truly equal status and you have to decide and nitpick and hairpick between them. So you guys have a very tough job, don't you, really? In many ways, yes. Um, there are times when there are three equal models and it's very hard to judge, and that's when the argy-bargy goes back and forth between the judges until we do manage to eliminate the can only be one gold medal winner. If you'd like to learn in more detail about the judging process, click the link in the video description or in the cards to watch Jim's full interview. I was also allowed to try on the very stylish eyewear that the judges use to get up close and personal with the models. Do I look funky with them? <laughs> Back down in the main hall, some fantastic little dioramas caught my eye. They had been built by Gavin, a member of the Israeli Defence Forces Special Interest Group. I asked him why he finds Israeli vehicles so interesting. Um, yeah, because Israel is very current. Um, they change all the time. The main thing with Israeli is they take other people's tanks, vehicles, aircraft, 
and they modify them. They're, they're the ultimate tank tinkerers, as it were. Um, and this particular chief is one that the Israelis modified it highly by just extending the chassis a little bit. So it makes it very unusual compared to our chieftain. So how did you go about weathering this kit? What are your steps when you think about weathering? What I tend to do is spray them black, then highlight the areas, uh, the side panel skirts with white, then start to add your colour on gradually and let that black and white show through. It's called the black and white process. Basically creating as if you'd photographed the model uh, of the real thing in black and white, and then you look at the highlights and the low lights and try and reproduce that on the model in just literally black and white paint. And when you put your colour on top, that shade should show through. And then once that's on, I do um, a gloss coat and very lightly with sand and pigments. Very simple, really. That's some great advice there from Gavin. If you'd like to see his full interview, there's a link in the video description and up in the cards. While I was looking around, it was really lovely to meet some of you and have a chat. Thank you for coming over to say hello. It was really great to hear about what you've been up to and, in some cases, see a few of your models. While continuing my exploration, I spotted some very realistic looking figures and busts and went to take a closer look. I got chatting to John, who had painted them, and as I know nothing about figure painting, I asked him what are the important things to consider when painting a figure. Obviously decide which subject you want to paint, you know, if you want to Second World War, First World War, etc, etc. Um, each each uh, era has its own uh, technique uh, in each diff 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 difficulty level. Most figure painters, they do their facial features first, the eyes, the face, and then do the, the tunic or the uniform afterwards. But I, I, for some odd reason, I do the opposite. I do the uniform, all the detail, and then I do the face. I don't know why, but I find it's easier for me to do that. Uh, would you say there's any specific techniques or processes that you do to make them look that extra bit more realistic? Well, what I, what I normally try to do is to make it as if the uniform is being, as I say, worn. It hasn't come out of a tailor shop or anything like that, so I always try to sort of spray or even add pigments or wash, especially the, the German tunics obviously they've been imagine you've got to imagine what they've gone through or where, where they are they've been probably sitting in a foxhole for months and months and months so you got I always apply some sort of wash mud something like that or obviously a stubble you've got, you've got to visualize where they are what they've done where they've been so if you were to give one piece of advice to someone who was uh, just starting out beginning to paint figures and busts what would that be well I'm trying to I would, for somebody who wants it, like a size 110 scale, which are those what I've got over there, try to pick something that's basic, like a, a, a British North African Tommy. Basically, you've just got sandy colours to work with, uh, khaki. Don't go to something that's too difficult, because there's so many variations of German uniforms, SS uniforms, blah, blah, blah. Keep away from that for the moment. Just think of something that is easy and is basic. But I, I recommend people to start doing figure painting because... It's a shame because I think it's not that popular to some people. They're, f they're afraid to pick something up and think, right, I'm going to paint a, a face. I'm gonna... Just have a go and you'll be surprised what you can actually turn out. I don't know about you, but I'm certainly feeling inspired to give figure painting a go. If you'd like to learn more about figure painting from John, click the link to his full interview in the description below or in the cards. Of course, Telford wouldn't be complete without the international clubs. My eye was caught by a set of beautiful dioramas on the IPMS Austria stand. I spoke to Raymond, the modeler who built them, with the help from Reinhold who was translating. I first asked him, where does he draw his inspiration from? I have different themes that I nachstelle. That means I look at a theme so wie zum Beispiel dieses Thema mit der V2-Rakete, das hat es tatsächlich gegeben und das wird dann nachgebaut. Oder man nimmt etwas, äh, was es nicht gegeben hat, so wie diese Fabrik zum Beispiel, diesen Panzer hat es nie gegeben, nur am Papier und das ist dann mehr oder minder Science Fiction oder 1946. Do you draw it and sketch what you want it to look like first? Teilweise ein Grundthema, aber meistens aus 
der Hand heraus, ohne viel nachdenken. They may be improvised, but it's evident that a great amount of care and skill goes into Raymond's dioramas. If you'd like to hear more from Raymond and also find out about IPMS Austria's upcoming show in Vienna, click the link in the video description or in the cards. My favourite part of the day was getting to talk with some of the upcoming talent in the scale modelling world at the Role Model stand. If you don't already know, Role Models is a Facebook group where young modellers can share their projects. There's a link in the video description. First, I spoke to Thomas, who showed me his fantastic King Tiger model. This is the King Tiger mm -hmm. tag. I built this only a few weeks ago when I was on holiday. It was a bit annoying to build this in my head. I thought a lot of cussing. But generally, just it's, it looks brilliant, mm -hmm. I believe. It looks really good. How did you paint it? Is that airbrushed? Uh, yes, it is airbrushed. So what I did was I poked holes through a piece of card and then I spray painted it over here and then it created a random pattern that, and it ends up looking really good. Thomas's techniques have definitely got him some great results and he should certainly be very proud of that model. Morrigan was displaying her awesome Stug diorama. I asked her how she got such a good finish to the model. I use an airbrush that I borrow from my dad and I just did, did it freehand, which I have not done before. I put this um, mucky wash, which I mixed with a light and a dark one to get this greyish colour. So I mixed that and I just kind of like lightly washed it everywhere, made it go in all the cracks and it looks quite dirty. The Stug certainly looks like it's been through a lot. Next, I met Nathan, who had built some stunning aircraft. I asked him to tell me a bit about his favourite one. My favourite's probably this uh, TBM Avenger. How did you go about um, building and painting this set? I used an airbrush, so I did a pre-shading technique, going along the panel lines with Brack at first, then going in thin layers over. What did you use to make this little um, wire? Well, this is actually just, it's called Invisible Thread. It's something for like sewing. You can get it from Poundland. I'll have to check that out then, that looks really cool. I don't know about you, but I'll definitely be picking up some invisible thread from Poundland. There was also a collection of excellent car models. I spoke to Jesse, the modeler responsible, and asked him what he loves about car models. Probably just the fact that I'm a car enthusiast. I like knowing all about cars and then building those cars, so it just it just feels weird to like learn about a car and then find a model of it and then build it. Thank you, Jesse, for sharing your models and enthusiasm. Finally, I spoke to Alexa, who told me a bit about her award-winning models. This is um, an ARP plane, which was the first plane to fly non-stop from Senegal to Brazil. Oh. And this is um, a Renault from 1905, and I entered it last year into the competition. Did you win anything? I got silver. Oh, very nice. Okay. So do you have any tips for like brush painting? I'd say that it's important to have a good brush because that gives you a good finish. And also, um, if you make a mistake, then you should try and try and um, get rid of it using thinners as soon as possible. Some solid advice there from Alexa. If you'd like to hear more great advice from this bunch of very talented modelers, be sure to click the link in the description or in the cards. And if you're interested in joining role models yourself, I've also put a link to their Facebook page in the description. My travels then took me to the Small Warship Special Interest Group, where I met Les, who gave me some much needed advice on how to approach building model ships. The first thing always is to actually have a very good look at the instructions. You don't always necessarily follow the series there, but it's always a good idea to go through it first and have a look at it. Lots of people will start either from the back or from the front and work all the way through that way. And lots of people do that to, to make it easier to do, because otherwise you'll... you'll so easy will damage things if you're not careful. But if you start from one end 
and work towards the other with the small details, you lower the risk of actually causing damage whilst you're assembling it. When it comes to painting them, in most cases it's a case of painting the bits before you actually assemble them onto the hull. Some people will actually assemble it and then do it afterwards, but the majority of people actually will do the individual painting first and then assemble it afterwards, because with superglue, particularly, you only need a few spots of superglue to fix it down so it's not going to ooze out and get on top of the paint afterwards. If you want to hear more advice from Les, there's a link in the video description and in the cards to his full interview. I was feeling inspired to learn more about building and painting model ships, so I went over to talk to Don, who builds tiny yet very detailed ships entirely from scratch. I asked him how he goes about doing this. So I start with um, a plan, printed out plan. I print a number of copies of it so that I can then cut the various parts out, stick them onto styrene sheet. So I then cut the waterline out from the sheet. Um, I then cut the profile from the plans from the styrene sheet, stick the two together and then build ribs in between to give the line of the deck. Another one is stuck on to make the uh, outline of the deck and then fill the in-between bits with acrylic putty, coat the whole thing with a very thin styrene sheet and then that's the hull basically done. How long does it take you to build something like this? One like this, probably about a month. Not, but that's not working continuously. You know, there are days I don't do anything there are some days I do more than others, so. If you were to give one piece of advice to someone who wanted to get into, or was just beginning building ships like this, yeah. what would that be? If it was scratch building, I'd say build a paper model. Uh, there are printed paper models, and they ba I basically crib the technique from them. And there you've got everything with instructions how to do it. And if you can do it with a paper model, then basically it's transferring that technique the styrene and then you're away. That's some great advice there from Tom. If you want to hear in more detail about how he makes his superb ships, click the link in the description or in the cards. Unfortunately my time at Telford had now run out. The day had flown by so quickly and there was so much stuff that I still hadn't seen. If you haven't been before I definitely recommend that you check it out and perhaps stay for the full two days if you can. I'd like to give a big thank you to all of the lovely people I met for sharing such great tips and advice. I know that I've learned a lot and I hope that you have too. If you enjoyed this, please give this video a like and consider supporting my channel on Patreon so I can keep creating awesome content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.